For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. One of the unintended consequences of the Russian invasion in Ukraine is the rising prices of crude oil. India, which depends on importing crude oil to a large extent, is severely impacted. So what is India's energy mix? That's the focus of this week's Simply Nitin. I'm Nitin Gokhale. So, are you aware that India imports 85% of its petroleum products from abroad, from different sources across the world? Now, 85% of uh, nearly 1800 million barrels a year is something that is a huge quantity. And even a 10% rise in crude oil prices can impact up to about 0.2 percentage of the GDP if the prices remain high. For the past three or four years, India has been lucky that the prices of crude oil uh, in the international market has remained in the range of 40 to 60 dollars a barrel, which almost doubled when the uh, crisis in Ukraine started. And that's when the debate about should India buy Russian crude at a discounted price offered by Russia uh, or India should continue to import crude oil from uh, the usual sources. But the debate uh, is not based on facts or figures. Let us see where India imports its crude oil from. While, as I mentioned, India's daily requirement of crude oil is about 5 million barrels or about 1800 million barrels a year. The principal sources are, in percentage, 23% from Iraq, 18% from Saudi Arabia, about 11.3% from UAE, 8% uh, from Nigeria in Africa, and nearly 8% from USA. Now, this is where the contradiction and the dichotomy comes in. The United States is obliquely telling India that do not buy Russian oil because uh, we have put sanctions on Russia following the invasion of Ukraine. Forgetting that most of the oil, uh, about 8% uh, from uh, North America, comes from USA. And from Russia, you will be surprised to know, India imports less than 1% of its requirement. So, this whole debate about India should not or should buy uh, Russian crude because now they are giving 22% discount is futile. Because that does not make any dent in India's energy import bill. The energy, as I have pointed out to you, mostly comes from West Asian countries or from Nigeria and uh, US, as uh, is the case in the past uh, few years or so. So why is this debate on? The debate is mainly on because the Western alliance or the Western countries do not want India to take sides with Russia. They want India to condemn Russia. They want India to uh, criticize Russia and say that what Russia is doing in Ukraine is wrong. India's stand in UN and other multilateral forums has been very clear that it will act in India's own national interest and not go by what the Western alliance wants or what America wants. Now, America wants India to outright condemn Russia. But for various reasons that we spoke about last week, uh, India will not go against uh, Russia for geopolitical as well as defense needs. Now, in the energy sector itself, the crude that comes from uh, Russia has been booked for this month, that is uh, March, April and May. But the quantity is very limited, two or three million barrels. And this is, is not sufficient even to fill what is called the ultra-large crude carrier. If you've seen those big tankers on the sea, uh, even that ultra-large crude carriers cannot be filled by one day's supply of Russian crude oil. So why would India even think of uh, buying from Russia when it cannot supply? 
because the distance between Russia and India is also uh, much longer than distance between West Asian countries and India. So the cost of shipping is higher. Uh, the uh, discounted price may just get offset by the cost of shipping itself from Russia. So it is a misleading debate. It is uh, selective. It is misinformed and something that we must take note of that Russian crude is of no consequence in India's energy mix, which largely comes from other sources, as I mentioned. But there is an interesting dependence that the European nations have on Russian gas, natural gas. It goes from Russia uh, via a pipeline, uh, Nord 1, Nord 2, as, as you are aware, uh, now you must be reading it in most of the uh, discourse on uh, Russia, Ukraine. And last year, for instance, Russia exported 8.9 trillion cubic feet of liquefied and piped natural gas. 36% of that is produced in Russia. Where did it export? 84% of that exported natural gas went to European nations. And they are so dependent on that liquefied natural gas from Russia that the Europeans might sanction Russia in terms of financial institutions, uh, they might uh, cut out uh, financial payment instruments like uh, Visa and MasterCard. They might uh, even sanction uh, Russian oligarch uh, community in uh, US and Europe. But they will not stop the natural gas because Europe is overwhelmingly dependent on Russian natural gas through the pipeline that has been laid uh, many years ago. So therefore, this is a contradiction. The European and the Western alliance is telling India, don't buy the crude oil, but we will continue to buy Russian natural gas because it is a matter of survival for us. And this is what you, the viewer, should know. That when India says that we will not take sides, there are multiple reasons. One of them is the double standards applied by the Western nations, the European nations, the Americans who uh, continue to have these uh, different standards uh, implied for India and for themselves. Which are the main countries which import uh, natural gas from Russia? Germany, Turkey, Italy, Belarus and France. They received most of the natural gas. And on the other hand, China and Japan are among the top 10 destinations for Russian natural gas. Together, all of them account for more than 95% of the Russian gas being supplied to these nations. 10% of that 95% goes to China and Japan. Understandably, China is not criticizing Russia because it has a different geopolitical equation. But Japan, which wants to condemn, what, which wanted even India to condemn Russia, also takes about 5-6% to 6 of its energy needs from Russia. So therefore, this whole debate or this whole um, argument that uh, Western nations, commentators, influencers are making that Russia should be isolated, Russia should be banned from international markets and international uh, transactions, uh, falls flat on its face because European nations continue to be dependent on Russia for its energy needs. Crude oil, uh, Europe buys 49% uh, of crude oil. Uh, it comes from uh, Europe itself and the rest of the world. 38% uh, comes from Asia and Oce Oceania. Natural gas, 74% uh, for all European countries put together comes from Russia. Coal, 32% of the coal for European nations comes from Russia. Natural gas export from Russia uh, to these important countries, as I mentioned, Germany, Turkey, Italy, France, Poland, rest of the region uh, is as high as uh, nearly 75% of, of its product coming from Russia. Given all this dependence, how are the European nations going to survive if Russia stops the natural gas going to Europe? That's the question they should be asking themselves and not telling India not to buy Russian crude, which in any case doesn't make much of a difference to India's energy needs, especially crude oil. This is today's reality. The world is interconnected and dependent on each other. And therefore, what stand India and China are taking in the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict is pragmatic and not based on emotions or the old rivalries. The Americans 
uh, have provoked Russia, as I mentioned in the previous two uh, programs, by expanding the NATO and taking the NATO uh, forces almost to the uh, Russian doorstep. And sooner or later, this was bound to happen. But if the war ends soon, then we may be back to square one, where Europe will continue to depend on the Russian oil and gas. Uh, US will continue to talk about sanctioning uh, Russia, but uh, it will focus mainly on China as its rival and not Russia. And the European countries will continue to make statements, but at the same time, uh, continue to buy oil and gas from uh, Russia. That's the reality I wanted to flag in this week's uh, edition of Simply Nitin. This is, remember, the 99th episode of Simply Nitin. Next week, I may have a surprise for you, bringing to you uh, the 100th episode from uh, the field, from on ground uh, somewhere uh, that I'm likely to be. And uh, then celebrate that occasion with all of you. You've been a great support, uh, excellent feedback. Uh, we have taken lessons from there, taken your suggestions on board. Uh, if you are seeing it uh, for the first time, uh, subscribe yourself and tell your friends, colleagues and family to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, continue to watch Simply Nitin every Saturday. I'm Nitin Gokhale. Thanks for now.